Hey, HK fans, James here with another Target of Opportunity video. Uh, today I'm here with uh, Mike Woodward of TSC Machine. Uh, myself and James Rupley are soaking up as much belt fed HK knowledge as possible for the upcoming Vickers Guide Volume 1. Um, but I wanted to showcase this really unique build of an early MP5 that Mike has done for a friend of ours. Um, this one, as you can see, um, comes from the late 1960s period. And most noticeable probably for, for you guys, you'll see the kind of earlier gray phosphate finish that was uh, present at the time. Um, also on here, you've got the original classic style handguards as we call them today. Uh, the charging handle on these is actually spring-loaded instead of pinned in like the, uh, the later models. And that's uh, working in conjunction with a larger uh, front end on the bolt carrier itself. It goes much further into the uh, receiver than the later models. Up here on the top of the receiver, what you'll notice that's absent are the uh, optics mounting tabs that we saw come into play in the early 1970s on all the roller delayed guns. The early uh, models come out of the 60s didn't have those. And then you can see from the markings here, um, caliber spelled with a K instead of with a C um, per German spec, um, but built for a 68 gun. So very, very neat early A3 stocks, but and uh, utilizing the correct straight mags at the time. But then what you'll see here is a very, very unique trigger group. And this is an early model um, burst trigger group where you can see it has zero, one, full, and then three round burst here at the bottom. What we're most familiar with are the ambidextrous burst trigger packs that we saw come out in the 80s. And on those um, trigger groups, you had safe, semi, and then either two or three round burst set in the middle between full auto. Uh, a good progression that obviously makes sense going from single to two or three and then to full but on these early models that that functionality uh, was after full auto so let me break it down and we'll show some of the internal functionality of, of this unique early uh, model for you guys okay so this early um, burst trigger group, what I want you to focus on here as we zoom in is everything that's happening to the rear of the trigger group. And what I'm specifically pointing at is this latch that you're gonna see right behind uh, the hammer strut, okay? So at this point, we're ready to fire the first shot. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger and release the hammer forward. And what you will have noticed is that lever follow the hammer strut forward. Now, under recoil, the bolt carrier is gonna go back to the rear. It's going to cock. Uh, the hammer back again, you'll see the hammer strut's going to push that lever back to the rear. It's going to eject that first round, and as I release to fire the second round, you'll see again that lever follows the hammer strut forward, cocking under recoil again, ejecting that second round, firing the third round. It's going to go forward again. Now, as I cock it to eject the third round, you're going to notice again the hammer strut pushes that lever back, but now when I release the trigger, you're going to see that this lever has pulled down and held the uh, hammer strut back to the rear and now it's reset itself for another three round burst. Uh, really neat uh, counting wheel function to get three rounds fired and what's unique about this early trigger group um, as well as the later burst trigger groups for H and K is that you always had three rounds being fired. If I short stroked um, and let go of the trigger early and maybe I fired two rounds and I let go, the release of the trigger resets the counting function. So the next time I pull the trigger, I'm going to get a three round burst again, unlike the FN or, or Colt designs, where if I only shot two rounds, the next time I pull the trigger, I'm going to get the remaining single round of that last um, burst. Uh, so really, really neat. And then if we lay these two down next to each other, you'll see here's an early SEF um, trigger housing. And what you'll notice here is a very round curved back end, um, kind of the back strap area of that grip. What you'll notice over here on this uh, early burst model is it's not as rounded. It's much more of a straight angle. And the reason why that is, is on these early burst trigger groups, all of that burst functionality was actually built into the rear of the trigger group or the trigger pack, unlike the later models, where you can see it doesn't have all this extra junk in the trunk, all the burst functionality was into the center of the, uh, the trigger pack. So really, really awesome to get to see 
one of uh, Mike's marvelous builds, but to showcase one of these early burst trigger groups here for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, excited to uh, and humbled to share the knowledge and experience with you. Um, until next time, guys.